Hello everyone, how's it going? In this video, we will talk about Palantir, trading under the ticker symbol PLTR. The financial market has been going through volatile swings recently, and one of the most talked about and sought after stocks has been Palantir. So in today's video, we will go through what the company does, what it represents, the recent price actions, the company's financials, and my recommendation regarding if it is a good stock to buy. If you appreciate my content, please consider to drop a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Also, please check out the links in the description section, as every help is greatly appreciated. So last week, Palantir saw its stock price going down by 17%. This probably marked the beginning of a retracement of the progress achieved thus far. Now, if we look at the price action of Palantir over the past month or so, things have been almost unstoppable for a few weeks before the momentum clearly got, you know, hollowed out and now requires some additional steam in order to continue. This is something that we have considered as possible and even likely from the beginning. Overall, it took longer than what we initially thought of how much time can pass before this point arrives, which kind of indicates that the market really wants to remain positive and hopeful as far as Palantir is concerned. It can be translated as a sort of despair um, or like a situation where they want to see the glasses as half full because everywhere else things are kind of crumbling so that is my theory of course the fact that Palantir often announces that you know they're going to have new multi-million dollars contract here and there is also something that really kept the interest going in the long run i believe that Palantir is a company that has demonstrated its capacity to attract capital Whatever the market situation is, of course, now it's more difficult, but compared to many other startup stocks, it's already pretty good. So going forward, I think that Palantir is currently in a relatively low valuation model in a sense that as long as people are not really interested in putting their money into equities, as long as the flow, like the total float of money doesn't increase in volume significantly, I think that Palantir will continue to be in this situation where people don't want to see its stock price going down by too much. But at the same time, you know, um, it's hard to go up either. So it'll always be in a sort of trend um, that, you know, will make people wonder what's going to happen next. But overall, I think that in terms of timing, Palantir is currently in a place where its price is relatively cheap and interesting for the time being and going forward i would say that as long as this company continues to exist and to grow um just like more of the same if you will more of the same more efficient of the same um I, i'm not sure about diversification because that sometimes doesn't always pan out well but like, as long as more of the same occurs to Palantir over the next few quarters and years, uh, Palantir does have a pretty bright future ahead of itself, which is fairly positive. And I would say that this, this fact warrants us to like invest in this company and not just the trade its position. So in terms of the technicals, the trading volume of Palantir has been around 75 million shares over the past week, compared to an average volume of around 108 million shares. This is, by the way, much higher than what they typically have just, let's say, six to one year, six months to 12 months ago. Over the past year, the price fluctuated between $5.84 and $17.16. Volume of shares tells us how many shares are being bought and sold at any point in time, and if there's enough liquidity to support a strategy or an exit. So, for example, um, if the stock is having a million shares of, uh, of trading volume, but it's say it's a very cheap stock, then chances are it's very easy to get in. It's very easy to see the stock price being bullied around. 
but it's kind of hard to get out at one shot. You would have to go out like very slowly so that the price doesn't get spooked. And it also, it can also suggest that there are reversals or continuations in sight. Like right now, the fact that it's, um, it's 75 millions compared to 108 millions, this may tell us that Palantir will continue its downfall or the sell off. And to be honest, like I said before, it is to be predicted. So we shouldn't be too surprised by this. The market cap is $33 billion with $15 billion of enterprise value. So as we compare the current price to the historical price fluctuations, the stock is 20% higher than the one month low, but 93% higher than the three month low and 140% higher than the 52 week low. On the options market, the implied volatility is 60% compared to the historical volatility of 70%. The put call volume ratio is currently 0.35. Many stocks have a higher put option volume because they have like hedging instruments against their long positions. The most recent volume of options traded is 334,000 contracts a day versus the 30 day average of 542,000. The open interest has 2.7 million contracts and the 30 day average is 2.8 million contracts. In terms of the shareholder structure, institutional shareholders own 33% of all the float. And this marks to a certain degree, a layer of reliability, trust and legitimacy for Palantir. But of course, I would like to see this percentage increase. Um, it's always good to see some institutional participation. And the biggest shareholders include Vanguard, Renaissance, and State Street. If we look at the long-term price action of Palantir, we must ask ourselves whether this company will have a place in the economy of tomorrow. We know that the company will not be profitable for another few years. That much has already been priced in. We also know that Palantir is in a highly sophisticated area of the economy and that it aims to become the analytic dashboard of the wealthiest entities around the world. The true debate is whether Palantir itself can stand the test of time and whether the market will believe in its potentials to become something bigger and more critical. Palantir fell by almost 80% from the peak of the share price, from $35 down to $7.28. Much of this is due to the overall market trend and the rest is caused by doubts on the company's growth potentials as well as the business model to work with government agencies. Now, personally, I believe that Palantir has been testing its bottom for some time now, as the downward slope stopped the progression for more than six months. Ever since the price reached about $8 back in May of this year, the rest of the downward slide is probably caused by the habit of just going lower by default. Does this mean that the stock will reach new high very soon? Maybe not. But on the other hand, I do believe that Palantir will have a place in the future and that its price is due for some significant change as well. Given that it's been down by so much, the only logical direction that it's going to go is going to be up. Palantir Technologies is a software company specializing in providing big data analytics and management solutions to various industries, including finance. The company's flagship product, Palantir Gotham, is a powerful platform helping organizations to make sense of their data by providing advanced data integration, analysis, and visualization capabilities. One of the key features of Palantir Gotham is its ability to integrate data from a wide variety of sources. The platform can work with structured and unstructured data, including text, images, and videos, and can also handle data in multiple formats and languages. This makes it an ideal solution for organizations with data spread across multiple systems and departments. It also provides advanced data analytics capabilities, including natural language processing, machine learning, and predictive analytics. Those features allow organizations to uncover hidden insights and patterns from the data. 
Another key advantage of Gotham is the ability to provide secure and role-based access to the data. The platform uses a combination of technical controls and policy-based access to ensure that only the authorized users can access the sensitive data. This is very important for organizations in the financial sector, which are subject to strict regulatory requirements for data security and privacy. Palantir's solution is widely used by government and intelligence agencies, as well as by major financial institutions, consulting firms, and other kinds of organizations around the world who can afford it. This is due to the platform's ability to help these organizations to make sense of their own data sets and to identify patterns and trends that could optimize their decision making. Now, as we look at Palantir's financials, the first thing that is noticeable is the positive gross margin. Above all else, this is a decent reminder that the company's core business seems to work. It is true that revenue has been growing slowly, which sparked some worries from investors, but the fact that the gross profit is positive means that the main issue is the scalability and the diversification of its operations, which may solve the problem once they reach a critical number of clients. We gotta remember that Palantir's revenue managed to grow despite the fact that there is a de facto recession in many economies around the world, meaning Palantir's clients are relatively robust, which can be a good thing for the company. The cash flow reports suggest that despite having a net loss due to the fixed costs, Palantir can self-finance significant portions of its operations with a positive free cash flow at the end of each quarter ever since Q1 of 2021. This means that the pressure of plenty to go through rounds of share dilutions would be relatively low, which is a good thing for the shareholders. Another significant aspect to consider is that its liabilities seem to be under control, currently around 933 million, which is mostly constant and slightly decreasing compared to the previous quarters. This is also very reassuring and suggests that Palantir is also keen on making sure that they have a low leverage, decreasing their solvency risks. There's about 33% of institutional owners amongst Palantir's shareholders. So what this means is that Palantir does have a significant endorsement from the money managers, but they are largely outnumbered by the retails, and that there will be a significant chunk of people going in and out of the stock based on the market movements, and the short-term price actions. It would also suggest that Palantir is good for investment, but if we do so, we must be aware of the people who want to profit off the swings, meaning we need to ignore the short-term volatilities. One key behavioral difference is that institutionals can afford to wait longer for their profits, whereas the retails tend to come in and out in very short periods of time because they want to make quick profits. Also, institutional shareholders tend to be more active in corporate governance. They are more likely to vote on important matters like mergers and acquisitions, compensations, appointments, and so on. They're also more vocal in their opinions. Whereas the retail shareholders, they tend to be more silent and more passive in front of different decisions to be made. Currently, there are around 4.2 million shares shorting against Palantir. Some believe that there might be potentials for a short squeeze because those 4.2 million shares would need to be redeemed at some point, and right now it takes about four days to fully recover. With that being said, I believe that Palantir currently has a certain volume of short positions because people truly believe that the company has a lot of headwind against it. I don't believe that they are concerted and they're also not entirely institutional. It's important to note that a short interest is not a guarantee of a short squeeze, but it's a metric worth monitoring for the investors. It's also worth considering that the short sellers may have valid reasons for their bearish sentiment, and a short squeeze may not happen regardless of how many stars are being aligned. Now, my recommendation at this current stage is to hold on to your existing plentier position for the time being and to add new shares if you still have any allocation left. I think that we can continue to increase the exposure in Palantir um, down to like $10.
And I would recommend to commit between 3% to 5% of your portfolio's capital in Palantir overall. I would also recommend to split down the allocation in batches of 10 to 20% at a time over the next three to six months so that you can purchase more in retracements.